And finally, we are live. Not too late today. Only, only two minutes left before one of these teams would have had to uh, play with one man down. But however, all ten men are in the server, and we're gonna get live with this. Tonight we've got Armor Esports versus Neckbeard Gaming. And uh, early last week, I believe it was, Neckbeard Gaming got their first win of season 24. And we're going to see if they can do it again. We saw Teak Hunter do some magic, and I was really excited to see him play again. So that is what I'm hoping to see more of tonight. Over on the side of Armor Esports, they're currently 3-0 and in this season. And right now we're going to see the last little bit of this knife fight. It's dragging out a little bit long. Next hit probably wins. Both players on 45 HP. Now we're just casting the knife round. We should just pull Senecus right now. Just jumping on, spraying down. Can't get the kill. It baits him. Baits him right back. Trade baiting going all day. And the aspect is going to get the last of that kill. Okay, there we go. No more speed casting like Sadokis. It'll never happen again. On the side of Armor Esports, we've got Yay, B Sharp, Zodic, the guy, and although his name looks like an underscore that's actually Cole down there as the fifth man for Armor Esports. Over on Neckbeard Gaming, we've got Magnet Shock. SFX, Aesthetic, T. Connors, who I mentioned earlier, and Dr. Mr. Fish. I'm not sure if there may be a different player from last time, or if I'm just not remembering the names correctly, but I don't remember casting a Dr. Mr. Fish, because that, that is a name you don't forget. Yes, we are going to be going into this round. Uh, Armor Esports, they elected to start on CT, I believe. I believe. I don't know, that was 10-15 seconds, so I can't remember that far back. Looks like we're going to have a pretty default hold here so far. The guy actually getting aggressive and nobody there to challenge him out yet. Two players from Neckbeard Gaming heading over towards the B site. Well, the other three of their teammates split right now. Looks like they're going to be pushing up to mid. I think they're spotted out immediately as that smoke does go down on Xbox. The guy's going to put a little bit of taps in the smoke right there, but he's not going to find anything. So B Sharp, he is over here all alone on the long A site. Oh, and Drake does confirm Dr. Mr. Fish has been added to the roster. Oh, and he, actually, this is an interesting play. They throw that smoke down and go into CT, and they shuffle places with the guy. That was pretty awkward, but we're going to see Ye pick up the first kill as he goes. And actually, Ye picked up a triple, and somehow, Auto Director, I was fighting him all that time trying to get him to look at it, and somehow Ye picked up a triple kill. And sorry we missed that, guys. But Dr. Mr. Fish is going to answer this back. They do get the bomb plant over on B. Mr. Fish with a second. I can see where they picked this guy up. And a third. He's answering that right back for you. He actually picked himself up a fourth kill before Cole is going to be the one to take him out. All right, we missed a little bit of the start of the action on that round. But uh, going back to the, how that all just started to transpire. Throwing that smoke into CT where one of the players was. I, I believe that may have been Ye. Um, throws the smoke down, Ye pushes one way through the smoke, the rest of the terrorists actually drop down into the smoke and push the opposite direction in this weird roundabout loop-de-loop -loop that I've never seen anything happen like that. I almost want to go back and look at the demo and then just make some Benny Hill music happen because that was, that was awkward to say the least. I just don't know if any of the players knew how awkward it actually was because it had to look a little bit different for them in the game. Anyways, on to the second round. Armor Esports took the first. Did a pretty stock default generic hold right here for the CT side and it uh, looks like Neckbeard Gaming they're going to elect to just pile on through cat there is one player right below them one player holding back on car right now but the first kill will happen from Cole and that's gonna make Neckbeard Gaming hold their horses I think that they have a read that three players might be there they're gonna shuffle down onto mid instead instead of pick one up answered right back by the guy who picks up two quick kills with that MP7 Actually, that was three, and B Sharp finished one off elsewhere. No, uh, repair man. This is uh, ESEA main. To answer your question in chat. However, on the back of that first bomb plant and getting a couple kills in their hands in the first two rounds, Neckbeard Gaming, they're going to like to buy in this a little bit earlier than usual. Five AKs across the board, and they're going to be piling on in to the B bomb site where they're going to have to run through smoke. Thankfully. Does go down. Stops that Molotov. Ye is going to get the first kill. Connors opens up with a second. S second player is spotted back by Carr. He's going to be put down. A lot of damage done by him, though. T. Connors down to 16. And SFX down to 46. Gets a frag for him and actually makes this into an entirely doable situation for Neckbeard Gaming. Holding this site. Four players still alive, although heavily damaged. But Cole is right here along with his teammate Zodic. And Molotov in. It does look like... One of these players might be rotating around, just hope for some exit kills at this point. They do have kits, but it would have been pretty messy. 
They probably don't know exactly how much damage was done to these players as two of the players for Neckbeard Gaming were pushing through Molly. It's getting tagged up through smoke. But SFX might be able to find one of them here right now. Dr. Mr. Fish making a little bit of noise. Could bait up for his teammate. Spots the head of the player. But it does look like Exotic is going to push right back down in the lower halls. And actually, he baits up for his teammate up there. That's cool. It was one more hole uh, close, but SFX is going to put him down. So, Zodic does escape with his life, and he's going to scavenge himself up the UMP in the next round. Well, a lot of damage done, and only a bomb plant so for Neckbeard Gaming, so they're going to be having a little bit in light of a buy. Looks like T. Connor's going to be put down to the UMP. Dr. Mr. Fish holding a Galil, a case in the hands of everybody else. Armor Esports, though, likes to, you know, force right back into this. Two scouts, UMP, comes with upgraded pistols. Sadek is going to go hold ramp, but right now we're going to look at B-Sharp, who hears something or has a feel for it. There's, there's definitely four players coming on in, but he's swinging wildly with his knife before he manages to pull out his 5-7, take one of those players down. Well, Magnet Shock, he's going to answer right back. Yay, it's a lot of grenade damage. I think there was a little nade stack as he was tagged right through the smoke. Three players left alive for this retake. This is going to slow them down a little bit. They're going to push through some smoke. Molotovs are going to come out. That one's a little bit misplaced, but I actually think Armor Esports are going to back away from this already. We want to hold these scouts in the next round on the back of a two-streak loss. Interestingly enough, these guys don't look like they uh, play for retakes. They definitely had time to try and make something happen. They had Zodic still there with his armor. Even going into the next round, you're only you know, tying it up 2-2. Uh, I'm kind of questioning that the back-to-back -back save like that, and they're calling them quite early. I'm not saying that saving is a mistake at that point. I, I just think there was a mistake to call it early. They still had Zodic holding the UMP in on the armor, so he could have peeked in the window. That Molly was flubbed. He could have got in there, maybe opened up a kill, rotated a player through lower tons a little bit earlier. You know, and the round before that, they called it even earlier, and they had two kits full armor. It was 2v4. They just didn't communicate the damage that was done enough, so... I was... Ooh, what just happened there? Ye is trading fire with somebody. It's SFX who actually picked up the UMP. And Ye manages to repeak on 36 HP and gets the kill on SFX. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> gotta, gotta love the balls on that guy. You tagged me through the wall with the AWP. I do not repeak you. Ye... He does. So that's going to scare the rest of these two players over from the B tunnels. It's going to put them down on the lower tons as one more of their players. That's T-Connors, who does have the AWP in his hands now. And this was the guy that I saw do absolute work with it last week. He's going to have the opening peak right now. He's going to be peeking on Ye, Auto Director. Actually, does change with the best of the time. As Ye does get the first tag and follows it up. This guy is actually looking damn good with just the scout. So I bet they're feeling pretty good about saving these right now. Smoke is going to come out from the, tier, the terrorist side. And uh, interestingly enough, I don't think that more than one other player was spotted right now, so the rotations have not come in for Armory Esports, even though we do have three players still alive in B-Halls. Armory Esports is definitely dedicated to holding these lines. Dr. Mr. Fish actually picked up that AWP. He's going to trade that back out for a Galil, interestingly enough. I feel a little bit more comfortable right now after getting the opening pick, but B-Sharp is actually going to manage to get one as that it goes down as Dr. Mr. Fish does clean him up. So it'll be a two-on-three situation for the terrorists as they do get the bomb plant. And this time they actually do have proper rotations. Two of them going up into upper tunnels. One holding just through the smoke, which is about to fade. Nobody's made a sound yet, but after that grenade, he knows where at least one of these players are. And actually, after that shot... That's going to distract Magnet, who actually does manage to get one, but Armor Esports, they're going to pull this right back. After that two rounds of losses, they're going to just yeah, barely get this one going through. Just, just playing the, all, the, all the much better. And uh, Cole, he's going to run back. He's going to pick up that AWP, carry that into the next round, and I'd expect to see that in the hands of Ye with uh, what he was doing off the scout. Over Neckbeard Gaming with the bomb plant and the two rounds in a row of winning. They did get enough money back in their bank to force buy into this a little bit. SFX is going to be left on nothing but a deagle, but Aesthetic is going to pick up that AWP. Seems a lot of these players over Neckbeard Gaming are actually quite competent with the op. 
Pretty basic split right now. Two up towards B, two holding near long doors, and Aesthetic is up here on mid right now. Although two of those players are going to be pulling up close towards mid right now and actually jumping themselves up onto the Xbox. And uh, the side of Armor Esports, they don't play up aggressive on Cat at all so far. Cole is going to be their first point of contact if they push into this and decide to commit. Underneath, we've got the guy who is currently holding CT. Looks like smokes and flashes are going to come in. Actually, he just double flashes that one of those was going to be a smoke the ramp. Cole's going to get the first. One player does drop down. Cole backing it up. He does have a player to back him up on ramp. And that was Zodic over there. Zodic does get the little one-tap off that AK. T. Connors coming up. Cat spots the player. He's trying to get a little Kelly style, but Connors going to take him out. It'll be a 4v3 retake, so... It does look like this is in the hands of Armor Esports. They just need to hit their shots and coordinate their timing, and they've got this. Flashman is going to come in early from Cole. Does actually get both the players. They're not spotted out, though. Molotov is going to be flubbed a little bit by t -Con. It's a little late, but actually manages to get the kill. Magnashoff and Aesthetic managed to pick one up for themselves. Now it's 1v2, but Cole is looking strong. Pulled out the 5-7 to get a kill on Magic or Magnashoff, but t Connors looking strong in that AK. He's going to run over, pick up an AWP, and Necker Gaming, they're going to pick up their third round. This map, bring it up to tight score yet again. Let's see what the buys are like this time. Neckbeard Gaming, they keep losing players. I think it's been down to like three, uh, down to one or two left alive in all the rounds they've won. So once again, we see a handful of lils and just a handful of grenades. So no full utility, but it does look like we have a lot of aggression by the CTs. Magnet Shock is going to be the first to come down. B Sharp is right there, as well as Zodic. They're going to decide to find this information and back right up towards mid. Interesting play, but did not work out for them too well. Connors is going to spot out the rest of them down there in lower tons. Looks like Dr. Mr. Fish is going to be the one to actually die as he gets traded out. And so does T. Connors. Oh, these upgraded pistols, they're too strong. That grenade is going to do a whole hell of a lot of damage, though. B Sharp going down to 11. Zodic down to 21. And it does look like the only man with full health is uh, going to be over there. Just holding up close to the ramp. Do they check it, though? They do check it. Does manage to get the first kill, but he's going to be answered right back by Magnet Shock. These other two players for the team of Armor Esports, they're going to have to go 2v2, however, and Magnet Shock is on 1 HP. That is dangerous. Let's see if Bogdan's Lock comes into effect here and Aesthetic throws in the AWP. Come on, Aesthetic. Do it for the memes. Do it for the memes. Bogdan. Nope, looks like Aesthetic's going to hold on to this. Magnet Shock peeking right over his shoulder. Nearly goes down with that little bit of damage. Aesthetic is going to get the kill, though, and Magnet Shock follows it right back up. Good stuff on the side of Neckbeard Gaming. Armor Esports, what are you going to do now? He upgraded pistols last round and did some real damage. Actually made it an accomplishable, achievable round, but couldn't quite send it, finish it off. But it does look like they are going to force up into it again, which, you know what, after a little performance like the previous round, why not? However, we're going to see a bit different of a play. That grenade's going to go down. It's going to let them cross towards B safely, and it's going to be a 2-3 split as the rest of these three players are going to head over towards uh, long, long doors. And one decides to back up and go CT spawn. May have been a little bit of a mus miscommunication. As uh, the guy heads back that away. Meanwhile, Upcat, got an early Molotov. I don't know if he's trying to make some noise or not. Only two players are with him right now. One's holding headshot angle. The guy is going to creep right back up ramp. His head is spotted out. SFX pushes forward. Flashbang comes out, gets the guy down on ramp, but also gets SFX. And the second player is spotted up there behind box. Decon is going to get the frag by the player over by long. It's only 3v5. SFX bringing it to 2v5. B Sharp finally answers back. It's a frag for this Armor Esports side. That's all she wrote for their side. Neckbeard Gaming uh, don't have quite enough time to plant the bomb for a little bit of extra money. But. Only losing one player in the process. They've got all they need to buy into this round. Full utility, full AKs, AWP. Let's see if Aesthetic can get anything opened up at the beginning of this round. It goes down. Oh my god! B Sharp took the grenade damage from his teammate just after Aesthetic tagged him through the wall. That has got to be demoralizing. You're trying to help your buddy out, throw down a grenade for him so he can pass safely, and you end up killing him. That's going to force a slight rotation here. Zodic is going to have to come buddy up at mid. Flashbang is going to come out, though. Spots the one player, tries to tag him up through the door, and uh, 
that does not hit up any of those bullets, and these players over on the T side are going to be piling in right now. Grenades can come through, do a fair amount of damage right there, but oh, another smoke on the other side too, and there's just fire coming through all sorts of angles, and I can't tell what the hell's going on. All I know is that two players have gone down from Neckbeard Gaming and uh, make that three after that initial pick and aesthetic only player alive holding the AWP versus two that was that was a strange little series of events having smoke sandwiching you like that players on either side of the smoke firing every which way but aesthetic does have himself in a decent position he's gonna molotov off upper tons it's gonna make him oh he actually does double check to make sure nobody pushes through I like that very smart but he's got to hear this. Smoke is going to come down and block off default. Interesting. Enough. Spots the first player, gets the pick. Spots the second, gets the frag. Aesthetic. You dirty dog. Let's take a look at that again. Was sm so smart to double check that molly in case anyone pushes through it. But yeah, spots first player. Even while almost moving on both those shots. Just great stuff. Great stuff. We're going to be on the aesthetic camp, see what else he can do. Actually manages to egg up B-sharp again. Although this time, you know, yay. Learned not to throw that grenade as close this time. So B-sharp will get to survive into the rest of the round, hopefully. SFX holding up close. As there have been two players for the most part of this game holding mid. One keeping close towards b Cypher. Quick rotation. That Molotov will come in from Cat, that'll flush out anybody who's holding stairs. Meanwhile, they're finally holding up close. That's going to be Zodic, who might catch this player out with a grenade in his hands. Nope! Decides against it. And SFX, he's going to push right in and get that opening pick. And uh, meanwhile, off screen, uh, somewhere Aesthetic got a frag. And the push in. Auto Director, please. Please, I beg of you, let us see some action. We'll just go to B Sharp, since he's the only player left alive. We'll see if he can get any sort of exit frags here. Only a 5-7 in his hands. I know that Armory Sports like to do any sort of damage they can to this Neckbeard Gaming. Keep their economy down, and I just realized this. When did this happen? Magnet Shock bought an SG this round. And he got a kill with it. And Aesthetic, meanwhile. Auto Director, please. Gets the frag on the B-Sharp. Wasn't a whole lot to do, just pretty much an eco round. Pretty much a whole eco round. But Armory Sports, after that string of uh, it's five wins in a row, five rounds in a row for Neckbeard Gaming, Armory Sports are going to have the money to buy. Full loss bonus, full utility on every single player except for Ye. Smoke is going to come out early and slow that down, but they're going to get aggressive up here on Catwalk. Zodic is there, shuffling awkwardly with his teammate as they peek in, get some information. Two players there, grenades can come in from the other player, and he's going to get a double Kobe, the guy! That's got to feel good. That's going to make this round completely doable. 3v5, they're going to come in and, and uh, be sharp, holding really aggressive in a very, I guess, maybe an off angle, if you could even call it that. I highly question that position right there. But, I don't know, holding that far up is now just going to allow Neckbeard Gaming to get the bomb plant at the very least. And now it's going to actually be 3v5, or 3v4. Man advantage in Armor Esports for the retake, but that could have just been, that could have been played out completely different if B-Sharp wasn't holding so close like that. Anyways, into the rest of the round, Flash going to come out, stall them out a couple more seconds. Second one to follow it up. One player boosting up in the window right now. He's going to push himself on in. Aesthetic is going to get the kill. Auto Director is going to make sure we miss every single one of these until the guy gets a nice little twofer. And the retake is successful. Looks like the guy is trying to find out where the AWP went. Maybe. Yep. There it is. Tucked away. Back where it's safe. Armory Sports pick up the first round in six. And an AWP for their troubles. They're going to go in this. One of these players is going to have to drop over an M4. Actually, two of them are going to have to drop over an M4 to make sure this buy is completely full. And one of those players is going to be slightly light on utility. It's going to be Zodic, who's been playing mid, I believe. Let's take a look. Actually, he's going to be pushing over towards long right now. Meanwhile, Neckbreed Gaming, they do have two players rushing over towards B tons, but they're going to slow down once they get there. Walk down into lower. Meanwhile, Armory Sports holding pretty default. I think Ye is getting a little aggressive towards mid. Yeah, he does spot other players' legs. Those are going to take out Dr. Mr. Fish, but it's answered right back by SFX, who's holding up close. Takes out Ye, brings it back to even numbers. 
three of these players holding up towards mid. Looks like they're gonna get aggressive soon. Some smokes have come out. Aesthetic thinks he sees something. I don't know what he thought he saw, but it was not there. SFX, he's up there on cat tags on PMD. Oh, that's a pity. That's a goal. Sometimes you just get busy stuck reading the kill feed. But there is a player holding back on ramp. That's gonna be Zodic who takes out SFX. It's been a long day. After plant positions, looking half decent. One player holding it towards Cat, one over there by Gandalf. One on default, that would be aesthetic, but Connors is over here, where he's going to find the first two, he's going to smoke them off, and the time is kind of winding down, where if they don't get aggressive soon, they're going to change positions, and they might still have a chance to do this, and if at least do some damage. Zodic has, seems to spot out where the one player is, that's aesthetic though, they had changed out from Gandalf, which I believe that was Magnus Shock, who does get the kill, traded right back, and now B Sharp with only 19 HP, he's trying to run, but Teek Honors is going to drop down and deal some damage of his own, and Magnus Shock actually manages to survive, almost right next to the explosion, goes down to 18 HP at the end of that round. That'll be Neckbeard Gaming, pulling it right back. Now leading 8-4, to four. two more rounds left, actually, yeah, two more rounds left in this. Why am I doing math on stream? And also, why did I forget to turn that graph off? I'm a fool. This round, uh, on the backs of just pistols, and uh, only a couple of those upgraded. Quick like Armor Esports, not really taking any big chances except for this light aggression up towards upper tons. Not stacking a bomb site, not really putting all their eggs in one basket, and I, I kind of disagree with that play. Getting aggressive like this, it does make it a better play. So now they have some information, they can get a rotation going. And with SFX making some noise up here, throwing out two grenades, and that second molly is going to go over his shoulder. They will rotate a player up from long, who will be holding over by... He's not, he's not rotating. Why is he still... He's watching long doors, of course, but I believe there was a second player who started rotating on the minimap. Uh, anyways, two players dead for Armor Esports. And uh, this slow style of kind of default play with just pistols is not going to be playing out in the hands of Armory Sports unless any small miracles can happen right now. They managed to get two players down, and uh, that's going to be a consolation prize moving at around 14. Money is still pretty rough right now, but yeah, you, yeah, okay, they're at least for, up for, up, uh, forcing out some pistols. And armor and grenades behind that. They don't want to dig themselves too deep. I think they're... Yeah. That's about where I'd like to see the... Oh my god! Yay! It gets taken through the door again by Aesthetic. He's going to go down to 7 HP. But Dr. Mr. Fish is going to entry crack. Take out Zodic. Magnet Shock picks up one for himself. Answered back by the guy elsewhere. But Teak Honors answers down the guy. Yay! Somehow 7 HP catches SFX running through the smoke. So now it's going to be a 2v3 retake as that bomb is up onto the site right now. Going to plant it up in the open. And ooh, aesthetic. Nice little tech 9 shot onto B sharp and another one to follow up onto Yay. That's me Neckbeard Gaming sending their lead into the last round of the half. Armor Esports, they do have money for a decent buy right now. Probably won't see any AWPs unless it's glass cannon and nope we will not. M4s across the board, fair amount of utility. I'd like to see them get aggressive onto this round, and oh god, no, not like this. We have three WPs. B sharp gets tagged to the door. That's why I had to switch right to the aesthetic cam. God, that's got a smart. We have a little bit of aggression up on the cat by Zodic. Nobody home right now, though, and actually another player has joined him up there. So this is the right play, it's just not the right read. Because sacrificing one of those players up there, I believe that's going to be... Uh, the guy holding under CT. He gave up his posi usual position over there on ramp, and now we've got two players up for free. No information for Armor Esports, and uh, it's going to be difficult. The guy, though, he is in position to do this. Oh. Dr. Mr. Fish got auto director. They had them lined up for him. He didn't even do that. Aesthetic, gonna get one. Teak Hunter's gonna get one. We're looking for the teammates right now, but nope. Connor's gonna pry one of those kills from his teammates' hands, and that's gonna be up to B Sharp. To pull off now, no small miracle not like the previous round where it had some possibility 1v5 with less than half HP to give them just you know one more round this half it's not gonna happen SFX is gonna put him down clean before the bomb is even planted we're gonna go into this 11 to 4 neckbeard gaming looking quite strong against armor esports 
And interestingly enough, we've been seeing aesthetic uh, being the main AWP. Although we have seen in the hands of, uh, I think, all but one of the players. I think only SFX hasn't had, really had some kills with it yet. But I expected after after last match, see T Connors do some crazy stuff with it. He was looking like Young JW for a few rounds then. But they will be going onto the CT side, which is where he was really shining with it. So I'm curious to see if it'll change hands depending on the side of the map. No, we'll see. Yes, we can show some scoreboard, but once again, it's ESEA, so the kills are all screwed up. But it might change after warm-up. I can't remember how this works anymore. They fixed it, but then it was only like half fixed for a few days. No, we shall see. I need to put a nice big post on all my monitors. It's show scoreboard at the end of every round. It's like the number one criticism most people have. But it does look like Armor Esports, or so I'm guessing, probably using this halftime break as long as they can. Really talk things over. Let's see what they can do and going into the next half on the T side, which seems to be the more favored side, but some teams on CT on Dust too, and especially in NA. They're just devastating. And we're still in the warm-up. The response will be. If I draw this out any longer, I might have to put on some music and go get some water. I had time to go get water, and they're still not back? What is going on here? How much time are you allowed for halftime? SFX. Riggedy Fruity, he's looking at the booty. SFX, what are you doing? SFX going full creeper mode. At this point, uh, maybe a technical problem. I'm not sure exactly how much of a timeout do you get during halftime. Although I know that the supposed 30 second timeouts are never 30 seconds, so who knows what things are supposed to be and what they play out as. But this seems like it m could be a long one, so I am just going to throw on some music and uh, we'll see when these players actually go live again. You know, that's the way it is every time. You lose hope, you get impatient, you go to do something else, and then it goes live. That's just that's just the rule of things in life. And even more so in CSGO, as we head into this first round of the second half, Neckbeard Gaming versus Armory Sports. Neckbeard Gaming up 11-4, to 4, in case you can't read the scoreboard. But I can, that is the life of a CSGO caster, and SFX, along with his teammate down here, can't see who that is right now, they're going to be pushing lower halls, B-Shark going to beat the first one, pick him up, but Dr. Fish answers right back, Deke Honors up there getting aggressive in the upper halls as well, he's going to trade out two, but Armor Esports answers right back, that's going to be man advantage in the hand of Armor Esports, and the bomb is going up there towards the B-Bomb, so they don't know it quite yet, but Deke Honors jumps up in the window, gets the information, it's going to allow the rotation to come in from Aesthetic, but he's going to be very, very late, we're going to see where he goes, Deke Honors putting himself in a good position to spot any of these heads, actually spots the player passing, hears him trying to go for the plant, meanwhile Aesthetic, he's going up there into upper tons. 
good positioning. They still have time for this. They do not have a kit, so they're going to have to be fast. And they're going to have to hit their shots. But the way these players have been playing, they can do it. And there it is the first one. Teak Honors gets it. Second player is spotted out, so it's now all up to Teak Honors. 1v2. Knows where one of these players is, though. And goes for the wild flick on the second one, but could not quite line it up. Nice try, nice try. Neckbeard Gaming. Armor Ace Boy slowly closing the gap on you. You do have six rounds in your hands, though. So, plenty of time to work with. I'm gonna have a strange buy from Armory Sports, actually. MP7, Galil P90, which I hate seeing. I hate, so we're gonna be on the cam so I can hate it even more. A Galil and a Scout. So, no real rifles, if you wanna count the Galil. Basically, there's no AKs, which, which is why I'm questioning it. P like Cole could have saved with the AWP, and then you have just the, the grab bag thrift store buy. On the side of Neckbeard Gaming, armor across the board. There's actually a couple of head armors too, which will make those SMGs slightly less useful. As everybody picked up a Deagle. Oh, sorry, 157. I lied to you. I'm a liar. But we do have the first bit of aggression coming out from the T side. It's almost like they read this, and why wouldn't they actually? Far off T Connors is going to be in there. He's going to get slightly tagged down. Zodic is going to get the kill. Opening frag of the round for Armor Esports. So they're going to take that information. No, they're like, we got one mid, so fair to guess there are going to be only two players on either site. And one of those players is going to be SFX, who's currently staring towards the door in case they push through mid. And he will have his back two tunnels, so if a flashbang comes out, he can quickly turn around. He's actually going to reposition himself, so footsteps may have been made. I didn't hear any, though. Ye is going to get the opening frag on Mr. Fish. He gets the second one as well on SFX. That's going to probably be a very quick save from uh, Neckbeard Gaming. But they are running a towards Upper Town, so maybe hoping for some exit kills. I don't know if he was heard. He's putting himself in a nice, safe position. Let's see. Aesthetic may have been spotted out there. Spots up the player. Actually tags him down. Meanwhile, Magnet Shock is not going to survive. He's killed off screen. Position of aesthetic is given away, but he tags up this player as well, but manages to get the kill, so some damage done. He goes to try and get the weapon, he's gonna be put down for his greed, B sharp, getting the only kill at that P90 this round. And I'm glad that's all the blood it shed. P90 was thrown away for that Galil that was dropped, so hopefully we'll never see it again. In its place, a Mac 10. Well, yep, yeah, definitely, you know. They upgraded pistols and they upgraded armor, and if you spotted that out on the side of Armor Esports, they're not going to be having a good buy right now. Why not just go try and pad your bank a little bit, especially when you're this far, this many rounds down? You're really going to need that bank if you start losing any of these rounds, so not a bad decision economically. I actually do respect that kind of econ economy reading. Anyways, SFX spots out the first player for Armor Esports, and he only has his P2K in his hands. Although somewhere, Aesthetic is holding a Zeus, which I would love to be seen. Cole, I'm gonna try and splash out any of those players that may have been on Catwalk, but nobody's home. Magnet Shock, meanwhile, moves up close through long doors with another player. However, SFX, he is in for a bad situation right now as Zodic pushes on in. And uh, he was getting pincered on from either side, so his fate was sealed, but he was probably hoping to do a little bit more damage than that. B-Sharp is actually going to take out T-Connors. Nice little lurk there on Catwalk. And now, he's going to spot another one, snipes him with the Mac-10. Dr. Mr. Fish is going to go down, and then B-Sharp is so bloodthirsty. He's like, you know what, why not? I'll tap my teammate right in the face. Thankfully, though, he was wearing head armor and hitboxes in CSGO. Oh my god, aesthetic, he did it! I should have been on the aesthetic cam, I'm sorry. He got the kill with the Zeus. Zodic is gonna have to suffer for our amusement for that one. Magnus Shock, please shoot him! Thank God. There's, okay, there is trigger discipline, and then there is just uh, a non-confidence. I don't know what that was. I hope his mouse stopped working, or or his cat led down on his hand on his mouse pad or something, because that was that was unforgivable. I let's see if I can if I'm replay that fast enough. No, I didn't. If he watches this mod back, he should be happy, because it was bad. Anyways, next round, Armor Esports on the full buy, Neckbeard Gaming on the almost full buy. M4s across the board, a light sprinkling of utility in their hands. Armor Esports electing to play this one slightly slower. Although, Aesthetic looks like he wants to get aggressive, and he's going to get tagged with a grenade for that. You get aggressive, you get naded. 
especially if you're yay when you're on CT side. Didn't want their team to forget that that happened. That was that was a nice miscommunication there for that early grenade last ma or last half. However, we've got Zodic. He's up mid. He gets flashed, but he turns around just in time. And Aesthetic doesn't peek far enough to spot out the player, I don't think. Another flash does come in, though. Aesthetic is going to get the frag. B-sharp answers it right back. 4v4. Dr. Mr. Fish. Actually, they made a lot of noise up on mid and then doubled back, so Dr. Mr. Fish is going to be expecting these players to be holding very close. However, no one's in, and a smoke is going to come out for CT. This player spotted. Mr. Fish kills him. That's exactly how that should have happened. And then SFX spots out all three players before he's shot r promptly in the face by B-Sharp. It's going to be a three-on-three -three retake right now. Unless Dr. Mr. Fish can get this player crossing, he cannot. Good attempt, though. Molotov's going to come out, thwart any sort of window push early. I may have saved that just a little bit longer, but they did have Dr. Mr. Fish up close. They didn't know where the other players were quite yet, so why not? It does look like Magnet Shock is going to be the man to go in here first. They are watching upper tons on the side of Armor Esports. And they don't know where those other two players are, so even Connors is starting to wonder where these players are. Flashbang's coming out over and over again. Great use of the ability by Armor Esports. Dr. Mr. Fish likes to push in. T. Connors answers it back, though. And now it's 1v1. B sharp. Magnet shot. Who's going to land these frags? It's going to be B sharp. Let's take a look at that scoreboard like I should have done five minutes ago. It does look like these frags are actually accurate. So whatever secondary problem came off after the first initial bug fix, it's fixed. We get to see Aesthetic. He's looking damn good over there in Neckbeard Gaming, but I was going to guess it was B-Sharp top ragging, and he's just above the guy. Oh, SFX gets tagged down. Who was that? Whose dirty little shot was that? That was Coles. He's going to try and put one through the door right now. He lines it up, actually. I don't know if he did any more secondary damage, but Zodic and the guy are they're going to get... Those two players actually make that three getting aggressive up there on catwalk. Two remaining players, they are going to run back, split their positions up on A. One's holding up on cat, one's holding up towards long doors. And interestingly enough, even though they know those two players are back probably towards A, Armor Esports is electing to push up catwalk right now. T Connors, though, he's down there. In CT, so no one's going to be getting him quite yet. And Dr. Mr. Fish has rotated around all the way through long doors. So, T. Connors, let's see some of that magic you had in you last week. You know where three of these players are. Can we see some Kukli shots? No, we cannot. Those two players with only pistols in their hands really had a lot to live up to, and they uh, could not quite do it. Expectations were low for that, though. So... This gap ever narrowing as uh, Neckbeard Gaming have not pulled off a single CT round. They've made some of these with a lot of damage. Like three players, uh, not that one, not that one. You don't know one. So, God, Cole, I'm trying to go over the scoreboard and you're busy getting frags as people cross. Dr. Mr. Fish is going to be out of this. Now you have a four man defense, two of them with AWPs. T Connor's holding toward, towards long, aesthetic holding towards mid. So they're in the right positions for this. But it does look like Magnet Shock is thinking about getting aggressive on the end of that. When you lose a player on CT side, you usually do have to get aggressive and try and make so any sort of information read. And he's just going to re-smoke that and uh, pull right back. Interesting. Meanwhile, B-Sharp holding up close at mid. Aesthetic is going to be the first point of contact for these players. It does look like they're stacked up either go mid or cat. They can jump up over there really quickly. Flash is going to back Aesthetic off. Players are coming in, flashbangs, once again, great use of utility from Armory Sports, and the bomb is going to go back through upper tons. Aesthetic is going to tuck himself away. He seems to have a good read on this. What can he do with it, though? SFX is going to go down. Aesthetic flicks over, gets the frag, flicks back over, but can't quite pull the trigger in time. The guy's going to put him down, as well as sussing out where the player was behind R. SFX goes down. Teak honors, though. 2v3, Spidey Magnet Shock in tow. Can they split this up? Or are they going to go bolt in through the doors? they got to get something done now. Teak Honors throws away the AWP. Magnet Shock picks himself up, but the AWP... I don't know. It seemed to be a little shovel right there. I think he may have had a different weapon in the beginning of that. Bumper does have the import in his hands right now. Teak Honors pop flashes himself in. Spots at the first player. Tries to get the second. Can't quite do it. Magnet Shock gets one. Answers it back. 1v1. He's going to pick up the AK. Does not... Oh, he does have a kit. So he has time, but he has nothing. He's going to have to tap this. But he has a knife out still. You, you, you fake tapped it and then... What? What? I'm just so confused right now. 
He tapped it, and then, for, like, it seemed like he forgot he had his knife up for a split second, so he got caught in the weapon swap. Ah, uh, good try, though. I mean, for, for that kind of a retake, 2v3, and managing to get two of the opening kills like that, it was not a bad attempt. So, plenty of damage done to the economy of Armory Sports, but Cole, he survived almost most of the rounds this half, so he's got plenty of money to drop over. So they'll be buying comfortably this round, but the same cannot be said for Neckbeard Gaming. As they have some upgraded pistols and this scout in the hand of Magnus Shock. They are getting aggressive though. There's two players all the way inside, and one player up on the cat. Although Teak Honors is spotted out, Zodic taking some pot shots at him, taking some damage for his troubles though. And these players in mid, they're gonna get backed out. Catwalk is gonna do the exact same. Armory Sports split up fairly evenly across the map. Two players over there at mid. One holding for any aggression over in Long Doors, and one holding for any aggression over there on B. <laughs> but Eek Honors! You can't hold Catwalk! <laughs> Not when Zodic takes a dome bullet to the dome like that. They had spotted out those two players up on mid, and Teak Honors just ran the risk of that. However, somewhere Aesthetic got put down to 1 HP. I'm curious what happened to him. I think they expect some players to be over there. Auto Director, please! Somehow Teak Honors pushes out with the Deagle, gets another frag. That's going to be a 5v3 now, on a, on a pretty eco round. Let's see what he can do with this. Molotov comes out. We're just going to we're just on T-Connor's can. This is his moment. Oh, and we jinxed him. The guy's going to put him down. Gets a second, though. B-Sharp answers back with the third. So now, player advantage back in the hands of Armory Sports. And uh, positions are not too horrible. However, only pistols, because uh, Magnet Shock was not in the position to use that scout. He switches over to the 5-7. Well, that was a P250, actually, and does get one before he's put down. So, Armory Sports, they pulling this back on their T side. They're looking stronger than ever. Seven rounds in a row, bringing it back 11 to 11 and finally tying it up. Lost bonus is accrued. Enough for Neckbeard Gaming to buy into this round, though. It'll be a little bit light on utility. And what the hell are you guys doing? Triple AWP? I mean, this is one of the maps for it, but you, it's, it's kind of all or nothing this right now on the back of no success this round, or this, this half. So, one of these is going to be holding the angle on long. One of these is going to be mid, and I'm guessing the fourth is has to be up on B plat. There's no other way to play that unless you're just crazy and you have something I've never seen before, which I, you know, I would be happy to see. But it does look like. It's, who is that? SFX? A magnet shock. Just looking for the first point of contact. It's going to be aesthetic, holding up close. Can he spot out the head? I know smokes are different on Go TV than how they see them in game, and he does seem to spot one. Tags him up through the corner of the door, I believe. Take cold down to 28 HP. Now he's going to rotate as he assumes that more than one player is going to be creeping up through Cat, as that's what Armor Esports says. Kind of like to do. He's going to rotate on over. Has two players over there on long to back him up if he needs it, but they're coming up faster than he'd expect. Oh, spots out the first place the Molly gets in his hand. He's going to put B Sharp down. Top record for Armor Esports. Other guys aren't too shabby themselves, though. Smoke's gonna come down, smoke off CT. Aesthetic is in the right position, spots at the player, jumping down, gets the kill on the yeah, he knows the player's there, gets another kill! Uh, can he get the third, though? Swings over, he gets it! Holy shit! This guy is nuts! Okay, I mean, we're going to the replay, give me a second. Holy crap. Replay, replay please. Replay, please. Trying to be your own director and replayer is kind of difficult sometimes. All right, here it goes. Here it goes. We got it. The first, the second. Oh, and then he just jumps. Oh, just the, somehow gets it. I think he got four kills too. So my memory play doesn't go far back enough for that. But excuse me while I misclick. Aesthetic is actually getting aggressive up here, up mid. But that's not gonna happen. Zodic is gonna put him down and punish him. And it's going to be a 4v2. That round happened kind of quick, but I had to see that replay. Dr. Mr. Fish, the world is upon your shoulders after you guys won your first CT half. It's now 1v4. You get one the frag, but Ye is going to put him right down. Dr. Mr. Fish fried and filleted. Neckbeard Gaming, they're going to get tied up yet again. Armour Esports looking kind of undefeatable on their T side, I gotta say. Even even when like miracles happen and Aesthetic gets some op shots that only the likes of like Kenny S and JW are gonna get nowadays. Ugh. Let's see, let's see. Players do spot each other out. That's Magnuschuk with the scout. Takes Cold and the 64 HP. Cold jumps down. He's now in suicide. Dr. Mr. Fish got tagged up through the door as well. Meanwhile, 
that mid battle isn't going to be paying much dividends. We do have two of these players. That, oh, just I try and switch to him. Auto director, I can't trust you. We had two players pushing up long. It was B sharp and I believe Ye. Ye went down. Then B sharp picked himself up a triple, answering right back and trading that frag out and then some. Nice little bait there by Ye. Doctor Mister Fish, magnet shock. Both players left alive for Neckbeard Gaming. Only a Deagle and a Scout, so it's worth throwing away and trying to get some, maybe just an exit frag. Maybe pick up a weapon in the next round. I don't know. It's hard to get a hope, but actually, hope does pay off. Dr. Mr. Fish is going to take up B-Sharp, and then Molly is going to get a little flubbed right there. Listen, thank you, CSGO Geometry. Oh, this is an awkward shuffle. They're just trying to shoot each other at this point, and they're just looking like they're going to save this Deagle in the next round. Or maybe some exit frags the other way. He's making plenty of noise, though, so they know he's coming. Grenade! Oh, it got fluffed! Look, you can even see it didn't hit on the... Oh. It's just CSGO things. That grenade would have put him out of his misery, but the guy's AK does instead. So, three players left alive for Armor Esports there. It's going to be a little bit of weapon shuffling as the economy is not perfect on the side of Neckbeard Gaming. They're hoping to claw this back and tie it up yet again. AWP is going to be thrown over towards the hands of Aesthetic, who looks like he's going to go towards zip long doors. Only one player is going to be there for that. Mr. Fish and SFX, though, they're going to be here for this, looks like, what was supposed to be a faster play towards B, but the nade stack is going to push them back. Yeah, it gets put down to 67 HP. Magnet Shock, and one more player holding up towards long. Grenade is... What are these, these grenades? It's not even the player's fault, I don't think. These aren't NA nades, this is just weird geometry sometimes. So, Molly does come down, it's gonna, it's gonna splash them back, and another one is gonna be going in to try and clear out the stairs, but it doesn't even look like Armory Sports are even caring about Catwalk right now. They just wanna push those players back and make them think that they're going that way. No smoke for CT, two players holding a right up close. T Connors gets boosted up. Magnet Shock is actually there, but the smoke does come down in time from the CT side to stop that Molly from burning anyone alive. Magnet Shock pushes through, he gets one, Connors gets one before Magnet goes down. Three on three. One player here on the bomb side, spots out the first bomb, does go down. Talk to Mr. Fish. No, we want to see your cam right now. Auto Director, please. Spots out the player, tags him up ever so slightly. It is the last player alive for Armor Esports. Yay does get the first kill, but Dr. Mr. Fish gonna clean it up. Neckbeard Gaming get their second round in the half. Tie it up yet again. That's the third time we've been tied up, I believe. So, definitely cutting it close. And the timeout is called. I, I couldn't guess who this is. Uh, maybe Neckbeard Gaming, because their economy is so low. I want to know what their buy should be, what their plan is. Maybe it's Armor Esports to find out exactly what went wrong right there. They have not bought quite yet. And as I say that, AK is going to be picked up. Because economy... Yeah, one... I don't know. Zotic drops over an AK. Yay, maybe as well, and then B Sharp buys a lot of utility. It looks like what he's doing right now. So we'll see how they spread out their money right there. Looks like no AWP farmer esports. Interesting. Paco, is, I don't actually remember who was on Audrin's uh, ROG team. Was, are there both of those players from them? I mean. Aesthetic, I could see why. I remember actually, I, I watched a bunch of those too when Audrey was actually doing some uh, trials and DMs and stuff. So those were quite entertaining. And I did mod that stream, so I didn't get to actually watch most of the action. I was just too busy taking care of chat, being chat. But it was definitely an entertaining event. And the first I've seen of anything like that, so it's beautiful. Yes, that's where they're from? Oh, thank you, Gully, for the confirmation. Well. <laughs> I can see why. Because uh, Dr. Mr. Fish looking strong, aesthetic looking godlike. Yeah, let's take a look at the board right now. Is, yeah, is that aesthetic? Yeah, aesthetic up there on, you know, just 25 kills, just, just standard things. Slightly behind, you know, one kill behind the guy over inside of Armory Sports, so pretty evenly matched. Let's see where this stack is going to go. Two of these players up there on Catwalk for the CT side. Molotov's going to come out early to stop any rush, but it's the Armor Esports actually. They've got three players tucked away between long doors and mid. Zodic is going to spot out one of the players up there on Catwalk. He's going to throw a nade in to chase anyone out or punish anyone who stays in. Actually spots out the second player on mid. That's a lot of information Zodic gets for just one, one grenade. Actually, he gets a kill on the back of it, so things now looking good for Armor Esports. Let's see, Dr. Mr. Fish is the sole B player right now, spots out two of the players, and he's, is he going to re-peak this? Why did you re-peak that? You fool! 
Oh, I guess maybe you get one or two of those kills, you could push a window, but you know, people are going to be coming out of B tunnels anyways. The rest of these players in that period gaming, they might have to go and save these weapons. Like, it's not looking good right now. And I believe this is a good read on the side of Armor Esports, because uh, guess who's going hunting? The guy is going to be first in. He has not enough frags on his scoreboard, apparently. He's top of the frag, and he wants to go in. And they're going to pincer on these players soon. Peeks in, gets the first frag. Gay is actually going to spot out the second player. B Sharp gets the frag, though. And I'm trying desperately. It's going to be aesthetic, trying to hold on this AWP for the next round. But with four players stacked up on top, or three players stacked up on top of them, it was a lot to be asked to stay alive in the next round. So Armor Esports, good read of the economy, good read of the play really early. Like... Personally, I would have called that I would call that going for the hunt like five seconds after they had already been doing it. So, good on to them. Beard Gaming, only picking up some deagles and five sevens, armor on everybody but Magnet, and uh, head armor on two of those players. Looks like SFX got a little greedy a little quickly. He's getting chased back as there are three players pushing through B tons. SFX is going to go down, but Aesthetic gets a nice little one D. Makes that a second. Uh, that was two body shots right there, but still good. And Dr. Mr. Fish comes up, gets two frags of his own. You can see why these two players are picked up. Magnet Shock is going to push on in. They're going to win that round on nothing but upgraded pistols and armor on three players. Good read, good shots, and just really good flip of the coin on where you wanted to stack your CTs and uh, where the it's your terrorist time won, or went. Wow. Really, really good match. I knew this was going to be a good match, and I almost didn't catch it. I was so tired today. I, like, dragged myself out of bed, feeling pretty run down after a short nap, and I'm so glad I did, but action's going to come in now. Early grenade, early spot. He's going to be able to back off with his life. Oh, no, Magnetrock, he looks like he was trying to push through the smoke right there, and I think B. Connor, or B. Sharp, took out E. Connors through the smoke right there. That's got a sting on the back of a win like what you just had. But looks like SFX and Dr. Mr. Fish are holding it close on E-Ram. Aesthetic is still holding back by B because I don't know if they've seen the bomb yet, but they have had to have seen it now. Yeah, Aesthetic is going to start rotating over there towards Cat. Dr. Mr. Fish is managing to stall these players out for the time being, but he's going to get mollied out. He has to push in now, so knows the player's there, just tries to flake, but can't quite get it. Does a lot of damage across the board, though, and Aesthetic has actually been spotted out, so he's going to run with the 7 HP and AWP. A couple grenades and a fusel kit to save as well, if he can just manage to live. That'll be very handy going into the next round, as their economy is so abysmal. They're going to be playing around Aesthetic's op, basically. Spots up the player, gets the frag. Other players encroaching in on him. They're going to pincer in. Pre-fired by Ye. But he's not been spotted yet. Gets the frag, Aesthetic, you monster, you beast! But he can't live through the round, so... Neckbeard Gaming, they're going to go into this next round. It's just barely anything. Let's see what the buy is. I just want to see this. Yeah, we saw the quick little flick. We just saw a couple pixels, this guy. And then look at this. Doesn't even care that he almost gets pre-fired. Just as soon as he sees this pixel, just only needs a pixel of that shoulder. And he... Oh, God. Good acquisition by Neckbeard Gaming. Now, they've got a scout on Magnet Shock who's already had some chip damage done to him, upgraded pistols, and this aggressive play. Dr. Mr. Fish comes and gets the opening kill. SFX follows it up. Aesthetic is holding up close. Gets some deagle damage out on two players. Actually, make that one. That is it. So they do have man advantage, and they've got some rifles in their hands. So they may not be out of this. They might be taking this overtime. Armor Esports, once again, to reiterate, are on match point. T. Connor's holding down here through boost. Elevator, that is. Heavily tags up another player, so the health down here in Armor Esports is so low. Pop Flash is going to come out. Bomb is going to be attempting to plant. Molotov goes down on them. Dr. Mr. Fish gets one. Aesthetic gets another. Oh, no, sorry, those D Connors. And now Bomb has been dropped. One player left alive in the hands of. or AWP, in the hands of Cole. Gets the first frag. This is completely doable now. He has a molly to push these players off, but will they push through it? They elect to back off. Rotate down, maybe put one through long, one through cat. Or actually, it looks like both are going to go long. Cole thinks they're still there, though. Not, not too bad of an idea. He is going to be able to pick up this AW or pick up the bomb. Has the AWP. He can plant for decent post position, but he does have a good read on this. I don't think he spotted the players quite yet, but let's see if they spot him. Spots out the first. Oh god, one v one on the back of this whole possible miracle round. Doctor Mister Fish gets the frag, jumping a K shot on the Cole. It's going to overtime. Hot damn. 
they had pistols and a scout to work with. That aggressive play into lower tons, two quick frags and some weapons picked up, and suddenly we're going into overtime. This is the first overtime I've casted in weeks. I think since Nuke. By the way, I never want to cast Nuke again, especially in overtime. Trying to navigate the camera on that map and just be your own observer is the worst. Oi, you calling eight overtimes, Drake? Ah... For the sake of my voice, I hope you're wrong, but it would be exciting nonetheless. Both of these teams looking really strong, and uh, I'll say again, Armory Sports, they're currently 3-0 and in the season, and Neckbeard Gaming, 1-2 and in the season, which, by the way they play, you, you wouldn't think they would be. These guys are solid, I believe, like you said, a little bit of a roster shuffle, and uh, they are looking just ever so strong. And I was saying this earlier, back in that last, beginning of the last round, I really wanted to cast this match because... Uh, neckbeard gaming, like just looking solid. There's a, I've been casting a lot of really kind of low tier games, mainly in open. This is one of the ones in main I've been casting, and uh, I'm gonna might maybe try and do all of these guys' matches if they keep playing like this on this level. It all depends if I get something to be requested, which makes me I want to remind you guys if you have a match you want me to cast, just hit me up on ESEA or on Twitter. Give me like a half a day's a day's notice. Really helps me out, and because uh, a lot of P teams are like, "Oh, can you cast our match?" And I'm like, "Yeah, when is it?" Like well, now, and I'm like, "Dude, come on!" Half the time I'm usually at work, but 5:30 PST is usually when I can start. Sometimes I work a little late and can't do it, but that is where I've been telling people, and I'm trying to make it work. Tomorrow, I have one lined up already. I believe the team names are scribbled out of my notebook because I have them in a calendar now. Actually, I'm going to make this calendar public so people can see if I already have something scheduled tomorrow. Uh, it's a Hardest of Core versus Nexus Esports. I was watching these guys play on a stream um, the other day, just kind of warming up. Three of them in uh, the ESEA Pugs, they were looking very solid. They're ESEA open, and uh, I'm looking forward to casting their match. I have not seen Nexus play yet, but I believe their record is half decent. So we shall see. Oh. Gully, this is just to build my resume. I've been doing this... Um, I think maybe like 20 some odd uh, maps on my YouTube so far. Like, so not a while, or not, not for a long time, uh, but I used to cast Team Fortress too. That's how I got started. I adjusted over towards Counter-Strike. I did a couple of maps, uh, I think back in September and October, and I took a break, and then I started doing this again early last month, something like that. And I got picked up to do, uh, what was it? Esports Arena Santa Ana Showdown 3. I went down there this uh, past weekend and had a lot of fun. That's my first LAN I ever casted, and uh, they invited me back to do the next one, so I'm just you know, keeping my... honing my chops, keeping my vocal cords trained up to try and do this every day, so... That is the plan. Tonight, I'm only doing one, because as I've said a couple times this stream, I am so run down. It was a busy weekend. And they are taking all the time in this world. Probably some bathroom breaks going to come in. They've got, these guys have been playing for how, how long? I, I don't know. I've been streaming for about an hour and five, and I think they started about ten minutes after I streamed. So these guys have been playing about for 50, 50 minutes. So you know what? Breaks are probably in order. Get yourself a nice, cool, sellout sponsor Red Bull. Something like that. I'm working my sponsorship material. My sellout game will be impeccable. But I know, when I'm in uh, overtime, I want to get right back in it. I don't, I don't like to feel like I've cooled down at all. And it's not like either of these teams have been making horrible mistakes. I just think the Armory Sports was the better T side. And as soon as Neckbeard Gaming started hitting their shots and like some of the players going like full beast mode, that's when they brought it back. So when you're going full beast mode, you don't want to let that cool down. Once you're hitting your shots, you want to keep that going. But I believe this will be MR3. 10,000, I think, is the SEA rules. I don't, I think it used to be 16, and then they've been, yeah, they've been doing it for 10,000. So it will be first to 19, although something tells me, and it's been guessed in chat as well, we might see multiple overtimes today. That's how it was going on earlier. I was watching Star Ladder, and we got to see three overtimes on Nuke, which is just where that, what always happens. It was the tricked versus pride game. Took me a second there. Triple overtime on Nuke. Uh, there are fewer versions of Hell than that. Or lesser versions of Hell than that. 
Come on, guys. I'm not good at filling when it's only myself. That is what's great about having a second co-caster. You can, you can just banter. Even if, even if you're not talking about the game, you just have somebody to bounce thoughts of. Thank you. We are going live into the first of what could be many overtimes. And as I said, MR3, $10,000. And you know what? Why not? Let's just pick up two AWPs right off the beginning. And you know what? You had triple last time? Okay, good. If they went triple, I would have thrown a goddamn fit. Magnet Shot going to be picking up one of these. It's going to be going... Oh, that's right. That's SFX. Gonna be going over to the B plat aesthetic, but gonna be holding up on mid. Nobody is gonna be up at T spawn currently. So aesthetic, ops to rotate, and then rotates back again. Maybe something's yeah. There's a player over there. It's gonna be I believe Zodic, who is making a little bit of noise there. Flashbang came out. Footsteps were heard in lower halls. Nobody spotted out quite yet, but they are making some noise up there towards mid. Zodic holding up close by mid, mid doors. Slow playing this, I'm slower than any of their previous rounds. Our armor esports. However, making a little bit of noise as they go up towards Cat. And Dr. Mr. Fish, he's underneath CT right now, so he can hear this. Aesthetic moves up close, does not spot anybody there, so the read is there. Rotations are going to start to come in. T. Connors going to back up to support this player who is that's Magnet Shock over there on ramp. And he's going to have to peek up on the catwalk right now. As it did look like the T side was getting aggressive, but they slowed it back down again. 40 seconds left in the round, so they've got to make a decision now. They are completely red that this is going to be an A hit. They have, made, they have no players lurking, they're making no sound anywhere else, so it's going to be quite difficult. And they are going in. Teak Honors gets blinded. He was their first point of contact. And he actually is going to get the first frag of the round. Zodic goes down. His spot in position. He's going to have to change slightly because he's got 19 HP. Meanwhile, though, Dr. Mr. Fish rotating up through CT. He is going to get smoked off. Good post-plant positions, but the retake looks like it's going to be coming in. One player is spotted out. Cole, ship damage through the... Nope. Did not do any damage, actually. I was reading the wrong player's health right there. What is Cole doing? He's getting cheeky. Auto director, you're missing the things. Come on. Yay, gets a second kill. Make that a third. This guy's lit. This guy's on fire. I can't remember how many kills he had uh, in the previous. I don't remember him being top ragger. Actually, those kills are way even, except for Zodic. Everybody else within like four or five kills of each other. Aesthetic up there, dropping the first 30 bomb of the match, just beating out the guy who was out fragging him for the most part. But only slightly. So we'll go to this next round. None of these weapons were scavenged. Oh, SFX! He gets put <laughs> gets put down to 35 HP. We have seen so many through the door shots, and that's one thing I hope they change on uh, this, the next reiteration of Dust 2. I hope that they make that a little bit more safe to cross. SFX was uh, not the only player to take some damage there. His aesthetic was getting a little bit of chip damage to the doors and the grenade to add on top of that. Meanwhile, they are getting aggressive over here on long doors. He does not spot left first. So Fischer going to get the first frag. Answer right back by Magnet Shop. There is a second player there. He hears him running away, though, so has the information. Was going to throw a Molotov to stop him from the chase. Aesthetic goes in through mid. Gets the first frag. Oh, he goes for the flick, but can't quite get it. Cole is going to answer that back. 3v3. Yay. First point of contact on B. Gets the frag. This guy is looking good right now. So, bombs can be rotating through lower tons right now. Yay jumps up on window, spots out the other player, is going to take him down. Now it's all up to Magnet Shock. It's a 1v3, barely any damage done, and he has no utility to really uh, make this happen, have any sort of distraction play. So he's just going to grab this AWP and he's going to run. He did have a kid, managed to pick himself up a smoke. That'll be something good to put in the hands of Aesthetic next round. He is going to actually set himself up for a uh, possible exit frag if he goes over here towards a uh, terrace platform. What is this called again? Trash? Garbage? Something like that? I, I always forget to call it for this because it's so rare that I use it. Back by T-Spot. That's what I'm going to call it. Might spot out a player. Cole, currently watching lower tons. But that's not where he is. Oh, Magnet! He does get one. So his position is now known. Yay is going to be coming up here. Trying to take this out of his hands, though. He's spotted out. Magnet shock. He's taking a run. Puts himself in a pretty safe position. 
Let's see if Ye checks it. Ye phoning around the corner. He's going to get put down. So, some damage done, but it's not really going to matter too much in the economy. It's going to build the bank for Magnet Shock to help drop over a little bit more. Or actually, just pick up a couple more grenades, basically. Because the money, it's not good. Just over $2,000 for most of these players. As I imagined, AWP is thrown over into the hands of Aesthetic. Upgraded pistols and a UMP in the hands of everybody else. Aesthetic, though, he puts that AWP to good use. He takes out Cole, and he's going to get aggressive up there. Doesn't spot anyone in lower tons. Nobody up at the top of mid. But he's going to hold this angle and feel safe. He doesn't have anyone to back him up, so he's actually going to back off himself. Put himself into a more manageable position. As three of those players in Armor Esports, they've not been spotted yet, but they're holding up there towards long doors looking for any more aggression. Because right now, they might be losing their first round if things keep going this way. However, Dr. Mr. Fish, he is going to head over towards B, rotating off of mid, and as is Aesthetic, so they don't, I don't believe they have a read on anything. No players were spotted, no sound was, but they, they seem to know something is up. They're just going to stack three over towards A, two over towards B, and that is actually the proper read. As the smoke is actually, they're gonna, they threw that smoke over from Catwalk. Or is that from Long? That's from Long. What am I, what am I saying? All four players over by Long Doors. For a second that looked like that cat to Long smoke. The way that it was thrown, but... We'll see. The guy, looks like he's gonna be the entry fragger right now. He has been definitely hitting his shots, but Zodic actually is gonna get the opening pick right there. Peeks over the guy's shoulder. Flashbang gonna come in. One up close, T Connors, that's you. He goes down, the guy gets a second on the Dr. Mr. Fish, and now Magnet Shock. He's the only one left on point. He gets another one, but he's on low, low HP, 7 health. He gets himself behind the box. SFSX gets behind him, takes out Zodic, but he's going to be put down. And that's going to be all three sides of the terrorist side for Armor Race Boys, which is kind of what I expected. Those guys were looking damn strong on T side. But it was Neckbeard's gaming. It was, it was all theirs on the uh, T side as well, so. We'll see what happens. Oof. Oh, sorry, we're not live yet. <laughs> I got a little worried right there. Thought they were rushing up towards Cat and got some knife damage out. That would not be the first time I saw that today. It would be the first time I saw it this match, though. And speaking of this match, we are now on match point. Armor Esports only needs one more round on the CT side to win this. And we are going to be on the aesthetic cam. He does have a decent spawn for B. And that looks like we're going to be heading. T. Connors had the god spawn, but... Looks like aesthetic's going to be the one holding on to this AWP. It's going to be four stack over that way. We have Ye over there, as well as B sharp. And an auto shoddy, which is doing uh, absolutely no damage, even though it looks perfectly lined up. And Ye is going to go down. Auto shoddy does no damage. Connors takes a little bit of nay damage, I believe. And then, uh... Armor Esports, they get one frag back, but they are down to two players. It's going to be Zodic and Cole, and it uh, looks like they're rotating away. Uh, well, at least one player. Maybe just go look for some exit frags, because they don't look like they want to take this right now. And uh, economy, I mean, wouldn't be going too bad in the next round, but they, win the, they lose the next round as well, then your third round looks shaky, like exactly what we just saw on the opposite side. So they're going to like to save early. They did invest in, like, was it two eight WPs? I think it was just the one. Should keep better track of that next time. Anyways. Neckbeard Gaming, they're still in this. Slowly gonna narrow that gap in this first of overtimes. And, um... Rounds are broken. ESEA, you said you fixed the scoreboard. <laughs> What's going on? Right, okay, there it goes. It's fixed now. The guy, he finally gets the first 30 bomb of Armor Esports. Aesthetic still slightly ahead of him on 33 kills, and his teammates starting to catch up. It's Dr. Mr. Fish, T. Connors, they've started to light up, and as has Magnet Shock. Let's see what happens. Looks like a 2 and 3 split. Three of these players are going to go over there towards long doors, but that stack is not going to be in the favor of them soon as three players had pushed over towards B. However, they slowed it down as those Molotovs came in, rotated two of those players back through lower thuns. Oh, yes, Auto Sniper, that was it. That's where the money went. Thank you, Drake. Aesthetic looking a little hesitant as if he wants to go down towards lower, as uh, it does look like, yeah, maybe a little bit of a miscommunication on the rotation as T-Cons went back through T-Spawn. The guy's gonna boost himself up here as flashbangs and smoke come out. He put himself in a good position though, spots up the head of a player, gets the first one. 
Has he been spotted out though? Do they know where he's getting? He did some more damage. Dr. Mr. Fish is going to answer right back though. Meanwhile, over on B's side, they push in off of D's side and they get put right down by Ye and B-Sharp. And then, oh, Dr. Mr. Fish, he's trying to hold on to this. Manages to get the first one. He was 1v3. He has the bomb in his hands and no utility. He's 28 HP. An AK in a dream. The nade comes in. He spots up the player. He manages to evade the nade damage, but he does go down. That is going to be it. Armor Esports, they're going to win this 19 to 16. All in, all, in, all in all, though, a really good game and good effort by all these players. I guess if you just had these two acquisitions of uh, Dr. Mr. Fish and Aesthetic, communications are going to be slightly discombobulated to pick a random superfluous word. And uh, just tying it together. But all in all, the shots are there, and I, I imagine to see really good things from the, both of these teams going on in the next one. I will keep an eye on them as far as main goes, but for the most part, I will be casting open. Once again, tomorrow, 5.30 p.m. PST, I should be casting. Hopefully work doesn't go long. But I'd like to thank you guys for stopping by with me. The VOD should be up in probably like an, over an hour, because this was a long one, and YouTube is slow. But uh, thank you all, and uh, catch me again tomorrow.